Now here is the lead pack. Let's talk about different agendas. It's a couple of seconds back to this foursome led by Jeff Gordon and then even a third pack uh, that is led by Martin Truex. Matt what's Tony Stewart up to following Jeff Gordon right there. Learning learning a lot of lessons Mike as the uh, two Stewart Haas cars and two Hendrick cars run in line for Stewart. He was simply saying that he learned one big lesson that the recovery not quite as easy getting back to the front in the pack where he is now to that lead pack. But he's also sent along some messages to Jeff Gordon. Hey Bob before we get up here and get busy again just tell Jeff if he can just stick his hand out kind of tell me when he needs me to back down a little bit and when he needs me to go that'll it'll help me. Based on what I know about Jeff Gordon you don't have to tell him that he no. uh, he will let you know if you're getting a little too aggressive. And I tell you what else will be easier with this pack right here. We're going to have green flag pit stops here in about 10 to 11 laps. Those guys I'm sure will come to pit road together as a group. NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by AT&T. Rethink Possible by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And by New Line Cinemas everywhere April 30th 57 laps complete Jeff Burton has led nine of them most of anybody so how fast was Bill Elliott's cup qualifying record set at Talladega in 1987 212 miles per hour Mike that field the in every qualifier qualified over 200 miles an hour that race 2012 Burton out front the 17 of Kenseth a lap down Kyle Busch, Casey Kane, Bobby Labonte. We've got Kevin Buckler's car. The racer group entry. Right up there with them. Very successful road race team. And running top five here at Talladega. Yeah, Mike, I mean, look at the 17 car. We know he's a lap down, but look where he's running. And look, just jump over a car behind him. The nine car had a big issue. Look where he's running. Well, there he looks like we're about eight to ten laps uh, toward pit stops three laps ago everybody was single file all nicely lined up like Mrs. Murphy's Sunday school class and now it's on again but I thought that was a great strategy and we thought they would stay that way until we got to those green flag stops because I'm going to tell you other than Daytona you're out there running 200 miles an hour and you're trying to get to pit road and get down to 55 miles an hour when you're in this configuration it can be havoc I yeah, promise you. it's like trying to get on the off ramp and you're in the outside lane you got to get a you got to clear a lot of cars to get to pit road and you got to be sure you don't get run over from behind Sam Hornish or Roger Penske trying to lead a lap and he's getting a lot of help from Michael Waltrip he'll do it Mikey just wants to lead that's all he wants he, you know I'm decking out Sam I want the lead but you know as we get close to these pit stops Daryl you and I had the conversation about taking four on that caution at lap 20. This could put you in a position to take two, but you're going to have to be there for quite a while because you're going to be dumping over 19 gallons of Sunoco race fuel. I'd say a lot of them will take four. I would take four, and I'll tell you why. When you're in this kind of traffic and you're moving your car around like we see these guys doing, you've got to have grip. you got to have the grip to be able to hang on to that thing. Who is that, Mike? That's Michael Waltrip, who's backed up that whole outside line, Daryl. I don't think he got, got off turn two very well. It sure what's happening well the car could have got out from under him and if you have to lift any at all you'll get run over from behind that's a big problem the closing rate remember we talked about that if the guy in front of you slips or lets off you're into him Jeff Burton was in front in the middle of the tri oval but because Kyle Busch had a push from Denny Hamlin Bush led that lap his fourth of the race You know, Mike, we're not even a third of the way through this race. We have had 33 lead changes already. We could be looking at close to 100 lead changes in this 188 lap race. Oh, I think we will, Larry. Now, I think also a lot of these guys are starting to anticipate that green flag stop. They've got to get single file. you got to sort this out before you dive on pit road or somebody's going to get run over. 43 drivers started this race. 18 of them have led the race for at least one lap at the start finish line.
Boy, those two cars up there on the high side, Brian Vickers in that 83, getting a push from Michael Waltrip in the 55. They got quite a run through two down the back straightaway. Now, at the this is when the car handles the worst, Mike. You're out of fuel, low, no, not a lot of weight in the rear of the car. Tires are worn a little bit. Car starts moving a little bit more than it did earlier in the run. I think Michael Waltrip of that 55 is going to have a lot of friends today. He's not here racing for points. He's only going to run three to five races this season. He wants to do one thing, and that's win. So if you want to win, there's a fellow to hook up with. Man knows how to draft at these super speedways. 55th anniversary for Aaron. That's why Michael has the 55th uh, uh, anniversary logo on his hood. Great, great promotion for those guys. So Brian Vickers leads his fourth lap of the day with an assist from Waltrip. And does Denny Hamlin have a problem? Matt. Mike, there is concern from the cockpit. Denny Hamlin has reported to his team that he might have a possible electrical issue. The volts down to 10 on the gauge. He is shutting off different parts, electrical system as far as fans and blowers. And his last comment was, we've got to try to see to figure out what this issue is. Well, it's a big issue because it's an, they ha it happens often. Remember, he had to change a battery a couple weeks ago. Seems like they have a lot of uh, ignition problems, battery problems. Here comes our points leader, Jimmy Johnson, in that 48 car, getting a push by his teammate, Dale Earnhardt Jr., in the 88. And, Larry, I think now at the end of this run, just before pit stops, you find out who's got the best race car. Oh, you got a lot of help. Inside only. In Freight train along the outside. Johnson with Bush pushing. And a whole lot of help. David Rudiman in third. And here's Hamlin with Junior trying to come right up to them, right hey, up to the lead. They'll be right there when they get it. I tell you what Dale Junior is doing. I've watched him the last 10, 15 laps. He is working on the finish of this race. He fell way back to 20th, charged back to the front. And right here, right now, he's saying, OK, OK, where do I need to be to dive down here and win this thing? That's what he's working on. Seeing those green flag pit stops start. You see about eight or nine cars on pit road. This will be a routine stop for these guys. Steve? Brian Vickers on pit road. The last stop, Mike, he took four tires. This time he's going to take just two. They're also going to make sure that grill is clean on the 83, Matt. And the 55 of Michael Waltrip is in as well. The two of Kurt Busch, four tires this time. Remember, they went the two-tire route the last time. Chassis adjustment completed, says the track getting much more slick during this stage versus the first segment. All right, Travis Quapple was in. Sam Hornish made a stop. Joey Logano, Scott Speed, and Bobby Labonte. Now, the second time around, a lot more takers. Robbie Gordon comes in as Quapple goes out, and here's a big pack at the head end of pit road led by a crash. Kozlowski got hit by Marcus Ambrose coming into his pit. Dick. Dale Earnhardt Jr. pitting. He has said nothing about the behavior of the car, but he has run in the top five all day long. It was a two-tire stop last time. This time it'll be four. I mean, you want to pit with partners because that's the way the draft works, but you prefer not to be on pit road with about 18 other race cars like we're seeing doing this lap here. Kyle Busch comes out. That's David Rudiman just ahead of him in the double zero. Jimmy Johnson scoots out from pit stall number one. Jeff Gordon, Matt Kenseth, Tony Stewart, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Sadler, Newman, Smith, Truex. No apparent damage to that 47 of Ambrose. Almondinger's out and about a dozen more, all making pit stops under green. Well, I'm gonna tell you. Casey Kane's crew goes to work. And here's Steve. Jeff Burton to the attention of the Todd Barrier team. Right side tires for Jeff Burton. Many teams taking two tires on this round of stops, but Burton will take four. No other adjustments to his Chevy. Thanks, Steve. There was damage to the right front of Brad Keselowski's car as he came out from pit road. Matt? And the 11th, Denny Hamlin is in a four tire change for him as well as air pressure change. And Mike, you should see the cosmetic damage of that right front fender on the 12. Casey Kane, Paul Menard all made stops, and it'll take a while to get this field back together. Hamlin led the last lap from Burton, Menard, and Kane as they came across the line, and then Jimmy Johnson rocketed past. 
They're as scattered out now as a covey of quails, but don't trust me. They'll all come they back will together be back. Here pretty quick. 66 complete, 122 to go at Talladega. This is NASCAR on Fox.